Hey guys, Dr. Sam here, helping you get closer to great skin days. Now, last week I did my first video reacting to your comments and questions from our Acne Solved series. And there were so many of them and the response was so good. I thought I would do part two. Let's dive in. So there were lots and lots of questions around the prescription cream space. So I thought I would cover a few that I thought illustrated good general principles when it comes to putting together a routine. Although if you're using prescription creams, you should be doing this with the physician's guidance, okay? So first one comes from Cage of Stars. He says, seriously, great advice, thank you. I'm on week six, so one skin cycle in, using adapalene and benzoyl peroxide. So I assume that means you're using Epiduo, which is a combination product. And I'm finally starting to see results, which is fantastic. What are your thoughts on using benzoyl peroxide on the whole face for long-term maintenance? Or do you think it's safer to switch to just using the adapalene part? So it's an excellent question. And I think illustrates a point I was trying to make with the series in that in the acute phase of solving your acne, which may be the first six weeks, the second, you know, six weeks. So it depends on how long and how bad your acne is before you get it under control. But once you do get it under control and you have enough preventer activity in there to keep the majority of new blemishes at bay, it is time to put the anti-inflammatories aside in terms of regular usage and to consider just extending the preventer steps to include things that tackle pigmentation and uneven texture. So that's a long way of saying, yes, I think that the differin alone or the adapalene as it's also known is fine to continue, put the benzoyl peroxide aside in a separate product so you can fine tune its usage just when you need it and consider adding in something like azelaic acid or AHAs to work on texture and perfect the canvas. Next one is kind of related from Sinead. Um, thank you so much for doing this series. You're welcome. I have recently purchased Acne Side, which is benzoyl peroxide, and the ordinary is azelaic acid, which is 10%. And was wondering if it's safe to incorporate both into my routine at the same time, or is azelaic acid better to use after the benzoyl peroxide has cleared my skin? Well, I would suggest to you that if you can tolerate it, both active ingredients together will get you further quicker. So use the azelaic acid in this instance as your preventer step and the benzoyl peroxide is going to tackle the new inflammatory lesions. Now with time the hope will be that you get fewer and fewer new blemishes in which case you could happily use azelaic acid twice a day morning and night and just drop the benzoyl peroxide in to treat new blemishes as and when they appear but don't double treat. There's no need to put azelaic acid and benzoyl peroxide on a new blemish. Um, so that would be the way I'd look at it, but no, it's not too much. You're, you're tackling the acne from multiple points in the pathway and that's always beneficial. The key thing is just to do it gradually um, to minimize the risk of irritancy, but it's a solid plan. Next one is from Gemma. Thanks for your question, Gemma. I'm using Duac in the morning, which is benzoyl peroxide plus the antibiotic clindamycin and different in the evening. Can I also incorporate azelaic acid in the morning and would it be better before or after Duac? Now, that's quite a prescription-based um, question, obviously, because I suspect all the things you're using are on prescription. So what I would say to you is to focus on using the Duac alongside the different until the new blemishes settle and you're really feeling that you're in control, then bring the azelaic acid in. As I've demonstrated in the third part of the acne series video, holding the duac on the side for treating new blemishes. Don't double treat. There's no need to layer azelaic acid and benzoyl peroxide and clindamycin all in the one routine. So get the most out of each step before moving on to a new one. I think it's really important to be conscious of that and not just think that because you have access to all these tools that putting them all in together will get you the best results. So stick to the plan, anti-inflammatory first, control the blemishes, prevention is key, and then start to tidy up afterwards. Okay, a few short ones. How long does it take azelaic acid to fade post-inflammatory pigmentation? I find it extremely slow. It depends. It depends on how inflamed your spots were in the first place. It depends on your skin type and it depends how well you're tolerating azelaic acid. I would tend to lean into azelaic acid if I had a lot of post-inflammatory change. Um, build up the dosages. Tends to be quite well tolerated over time. The answer is so three to six months is a reasonable time frame. but do remember your sun protection. Be patient 
And, you know, one of those days you'll just wake up and realize, you know what, my eye doesn't go there as much anymore. So take your time, be patient, stick to the plan. Ava asks, I've been prescribed Epiduo, which has adapalene and benzoyl peroxide. We talked about that before. Do I need an anti-inflammatory for the morning? Thanks. Well, it depends. It depends on how you're responding to the treatment, but the convenience of it is that everything is in one. So for a lot of people, no, that will be more than sufficient. What you do though, have is space in the morning for something additional that could be combined with it. So something like niacinamide, which has anti-inflammatory effects, as well as boosting barrier function. So it can be really helpful to make everything that bit more easy to tolerate. And as a bonus, it helps with pigmentation too. So that might be something to think about incorporating into your morning routine. Now, Maria says, what perfect timing. I just started taking care of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and I immediately found this video. It was really helpful. Thank you very much. Awesome. It's so great to get feedback that things like post-inflammatory change or dark marks from acne, which can be really challenging to get rid of and can cause as much distress as the actual spots themselves, that that strategy is helping you make a plan and getting you closer to the kind of even toned complexion that all of us want really. All right then, so Brittany says, would you recommend vitamin C for pigmentation in the morning or would it be too much for acne prone skin? Well, I don't consider vitamin C as part of my acute acne strategy if you watch the first video in the series because there are other things that are more effective in terms of their innate anti-inflammatory effect. And there are those who individually just find that vitamin C breaks them out, the mechanism for which is not terribly clear. So my advice is usually to stay away from vitamin C because it is more of a traditional anti-aging ingredient and really only to reincorporate it much later on whenever the acne is well controlled as part of an anti-aging strategy if you're also concerned with fine lines and wrinkles. So put it aside for now, but don't put it in the bin. Makeup Craze 87, hello, says thank you so much for these series. Have started following the routine you suggested in the first video and my acne has stopped for now. It's now time to treat the pigmentation. Well, congratulations, well done you. Just to clarify, are these the correct steps for the morning routine? Cleanser, preventer, azelaic or AHAs, BHAs. Targeted anti-inflammatory, niacinamide, moisturizer, SPF. Now, the only thing missing there is Oh no, you said for morning routine. Yes, for your morning routine, that's absolutely perfect. It has all the elements in there that I would recommend. Azelaic acid would be my preference, but BHAs are helpful if you're quite oily, AHAs if you're more on the dry side and perhaps a little more prone to irritation. They just tend to be gentler. But yeah, that's exactly right. Good luck with the rest of the routine. Next one comes from Kay. Hi Kay. What type of retinoid have you found works best on hormonal acne, topically speaking? So I don't think there is one that works best in hormonal acne because microcomedones and comedones are part of the process no matter what the trigger. So I think that all retinoids tend to be helpful and it's really about matching them with your skin concerns, your skin's tolerance, and probably building up to the right level of strength that gives you control. So think of your retinoid journey as a ladder, start on the appropriate rung, don't go in near the top if you're a, a first rung kind of gal um, or guy, but you know, you've got to match it up to what your skin will handle. There's really no point in going in with something super strong and ending up dry, irritable and unhappy. Your skin will most likely flare and get worse in that instant. So be patient and titrate it according to tolerance. Quick one from Fifki. Hi, Dr. Sam, hello. Thanks for these great series. I'd love to know if it's okay to layer niacinamide, tretinone and azelaic acid thanks in advance so it's a, these are common threads I think coming through so my advice is that unless they're formulated together and there are some companies that custom blend the formulas together which means that everything is formulated at the correct pH um, and encapsulation is used where necessary is to split out tretinoin and azelaic acid. Um, niacinamide can be happily paid, paired with either, and you can layer that in another product before or after. Niacinamide is absorbed very well into the skin, so there really aren't any concerns about using that alongside the other two, but I would do tretinoin at night, azelaic acid in the morning. And then a final one from Dean, azelaic acid can't be used in the PM if I'm using tretinoin, question mark. No. 
As I said before, I think azelaic acid is best used separate to your tretinoin. Tretinoin is a fragile molecule and we should give it the respect it's due because it does so much. And I think even in context of using azelaic acid is top of the hierarchy in terms of what's the most important thing in your routine in terms of its potential to deliver benefits. So give it the space that it needs and that it likes, it's like a solitary cat and use your azelaic acid in the morning. You'll get the best results. So some really interesting questions from you guys. Thank you very much. But what struck me is that there is a lot of confusion around prescription topical agents, probably as well over the counter um, cosmeceuticals, but clearly when it comes to prescription ingredients, there is a degree of uncertainty. And I'm not sure if that's because wherever you're sourcing them from isn't giving you that accurate information um, or whether you don't feel comfortable asking your doctor. But um, I don't know, let's discuss this because I think that uh, you know, this is the sort of stuff where precise ingredients make all the difference in the world. It's why I did the dosing video, because I find that really helps me engage with my patients, giving them that precise information about how much to use, how often to use it, and what products to use around it. And it's the information I've really tried to distill into my acne cheat sheet, which you can download if you sign up for my email newsletter. But I plan to do more of this kind of content because I sense that's really where your interest lies. So I really look forward to reading the next set of comments on this comments video, um, but I'll leave it at that for today. Bye for now.